This is the three D. This is the three D transesophageal echo phantom, and this is the this is the box. Uh, the reason that I wanted to make this thing was I would go to three D echo courses at conferences, and we would be trying to teach people how to do three dimensional transesophageal echo. One of the one of the needs that I think this is a this addresses is that in those meetings we often try to show people how to acquire 3D images using transthoracic, which is not what they're going to be doing clinically. They're going to be doing transesophageal, but we can't get human models that allow us to put the echo probe in their esophagus in practice. So what we do at these meetings is we show people how to acquire 3D images using transthoracic, and then we sit them down at a laptop and we have them work through the process of taking measurements that they would make on, on a patient. The problem is that the laptop system and the on-cart system are a little bit different and they're never actually taking measurements on the 3D images that they're actually acquiring. So what I think this allows us to do is both practice the acquisition of 3D image um, imaging, but then it also allows them to take the image that they acquire and then do the measurements on cart. Because remember the laptop uh, system is a little bit different than the on cart system. And so they can become facile at the laptop system and they can still feel a little clunky when you're on cart because the programs are not exactly the same. They do the same thing, but the button pushing or the way they interact with the machine, say instead of a mouse, they use the roller ball and the side buttons here. That can be a little bit different. And so, and so being able to actually practice this on cart is helpful. The third thing is that there is an assumption that as the expert I am right and that as the trainee that if there's a discrepancy between the expert and the trainee that the trainee is wrong. And unfortunately we don't have a great way otherwise to quantify that. The assumption would be that I am right because I'm more experienced and that they are wrong. What's nice about this is that we could design various models that have a known orifice size and that would allow us to say, well in this model the valve is you know, so big or so wide or so deep or that the, the hole itself and the jet that we measure on 3D color flow is so big so that people will be able to test themselves and say that they feel confident that their skills are actually being tested against a known control. So the assumption is just that I'm right and I think that that's, there, I think there's a potential for error in the training process, uh, especially if for some reason the person who is acting as the teacher made a mistake or had an error in their measurement.